Hey, it's Loopline. In this video, I want to cover back connect proxies, rotating proxies, and reverse proxies. Now, these are all exactly the same thing, and you might hear them called a few other things, but the basic premise is they change the IP on the back end, so you get a fixed set of IPs to connect to, and on the back end, it's pulling from a big pool of IPs, so you get to use all these different IPs, and it helps you when you're doing scraping, like with Google and that sort of thing, because Google will see that IP on the back end, it won't see the IP you're connecting to or your IP. So these are really, really great for scraping um, and they can be used for posting too. And I'll put the link in the description um, for the place that I recommend that I've been using for a couple years that works really well. And I'll keep that link updated. And then so basically, this is really great because, like I said, you get that big pool of IPs to work with, and it's much cheaper than if you're going to buy, like if you buy like a thousand private proxies, it's going to cost you a fortune, but you could get an IP pool, an IP pool of thousands of IPs for less than the cost of, you know, like a hundred private proxies. So this is really great. Let's talk about it. So the place I use and recommend is Storm Proxies, and this is May of 2017. Uh, this is what the control panel looks like. You can see up here we have back connect proxies. They have other other packages like dedicated proxies and residential rotating proxies, but back connect are great with Scrapebox. Also a little bit less expensive than like the residential ones. And basically what you're going to need to do is authorize your IP address. They show you your IP up here. You put it in here. You click save settings and away you go. Now you can see different options depending on what you are doing. You might want USA and EU proxies or USA proxies or EU only. That's the back end IP that the rest of the internet sees. But for scraping, obviously here you can see best for scraping. Worldwide is best because you get the biggest IP pool. When you're done, save settings. It does take like 15 minutes to update. No big deal. The main gateway proxies are the ones you want to use for scraping. The three minute proxies are the ones you want to use for posting. You can even see here if they know it is scraping on the three or 15 minute proxies that they'll terminate your account. So it's important to make sure you don't get this wrong because these work differently. And these are optimized differently anyways. The main gateway is optimized for scraping and the three minute proxies are optimized for posting. So we want to use the right ones and I'll show you how to do So first let's just grab the proxies here and in Scrapebox we can go here and edit and just paste them in. And the first thing that you're going to be tempted to do, of course, is test the proxies. So you need to know that you don't need to test the proxies, number one. Number two, if you do test the proxies, they're going to show as not anonymous. And I'll show you. What's going to happen is Scrapebox, you can test proxies multiple ways. Scrapebox chose the way years ago that was best for the vast majority of their users, which were using public proxies and private proxies. And that's still true to this day. That's what most people do. Um, and for that type of test, it, it expects the same IP when it gets there as it does when it starts with. So Scrapebox sends a request to this IP address, which then forwards it to a proxy test server, and Scrapebox expects to see this IP address when it gets to the proxy test server, but it doesn't. It's seeing that backend IP address that was changed you know, because it picks from a pool, and so therefore it says your proxy leaks your IP. That's not true. It's not accurate for back connect, rotating, and reverse proxies, but it is what it is. And I've even talked to Scrapebox about this, and they're like, the best advice that we can give you is don't test your proxies, just use them. So that's what I'm going to tell you. Don't test them, just use them. They work. And if they don't work, you'll know because you'll get zero results, no matter how hard you try. And then you need to go back and make sure you authorize your IP address over here or something like that. So um, you'll see this, and that's fine. If you have a Google test, it'll probably show past, but um, the, this will fail, and that's normal. It doesn't matter. Testing the proxies has no bearing on actually using the proxies. So setting them up, we need to go to connections, timeouts, and other settings. The first thing we need to note is connections here. This says I have the 80 thread package, right? Threads and connections are the same thing. It means the amount of simultaneous connections you can use. So I can connect with 80 simultaneous connections, think loading 80 web pages at once, more or less, um, at the same time. But I can only use 25% of those total connections for scraping. So it says somewhere down here, I think, uh, the number of threads the harvester should not exceed 25% of the threads allowed for your account. So 25% of the threads would be 20. Um, so when I go to Scrapebox here, I'm going to set the harvester at 20, which is set at that right here, you can see. Um, you can use the other 60 threads for then posting, but they just don't want you to use more than 25% of your allotment for harvesting. 
And so timeouts, we're going to go harvester timeouts. I said it's a 60. Um, a lot of people do more like 30, and that's probably fine. I just like to give it some extra time because I might be connecting from an IP all the way around the world, and Google's going to respond pretty fast anyways. Um, but, you know, I'm a little OCD. I like to go safer, as you can see the green, rather than not. So 30 is probably fine, though, for the timeouts. For more harvester settings, we want to max out this proxy retries. That's the number of retries that Scrapebox is going to try for a given keyword before it skips it. So if you need total accuracy, use the detailed harvester. Again, I have other videos on this, um, but because it will sit there and try all day long a thousand times uh, before it skips a keyword, it will never skip a keyword. But the custom harvester, it will try up to 10 different tries, which will get you 10 different IPs on the back end because you get a new IP on the back end every request. So it'll try up to 10 different ties before it skips that keyword, which is fine for most people. If I've got 310,000 keywords, I don't care if I, if I lose 20 keywords out of all those that get skipped just because whatever happened and you know 10 times an IP was blocked, which is not likely, but it could happen. So the next thing to do is remove failed proxies, uncheck this. It only applies to the detailed harvester, but what happens is if I check this, Scrapebox will say, oh, that one didn't work, oh, that one didn't work, and I'll just remove them, and then it'll just stop because it says, okay, there are no more IPs that you can use, period. But it doesn't know that you have thousands of IPs in a pool on the back end to use, so just don't check that. No big deal. Um, and then harvester min threads, if don't understand what this is again I have other videos check out my harvester video on that which is on the same channel just it's important to note don't run it up to like 100% like 20% is fine or off is totally fine it really mostly applies if you're using the automator which I do a lot um, but if you're not using the automator it probably doesn't even really matter and so that's the settings that you're going to want to do um, and then we can just start harvesting here make sure you check the use proxies box of course and I'm just going to use Google and Bing um, Google is going to be a little slower with these than Bing is just because out of the IP pool there will be some out there that are blocked that's very normal because other users are using Google and I they block IPs and then they unblock them and that's very normal so let's just start it before we do make sure you're not using server proxies or enable auto load proxies from file make sure those are unchecked and then hit start if you have those items checked down here, then it brings in proxies from other places. So you can see Bing's off to a roar and start, and Google's coming along as well. Very normal for that. I use Bing a lot, actually, because they give a lot of results, um, and they they very rarely ban IP addresses because they like you to get queries, probably for their shareholders to prove that they get lots of results, but that's irrelevant right now. What matters is that both of them work just fine, but Bing's going to be a little faster, very normal. You'll also see a few errors over here in the errors column. And we can see the speed up here. That's pretty fast for scraping. Errors are normal. This can happen, one, if an IP address is blocked on the back end. Two, sometimes things just time out and connections don't go through. Um, that's very normal, like when you load a web page and it just doesn't work, you know, and you have to refresh it. It happens. Um, and then three, sometimes when the proxies are getting changed in the back end, the connection gets lost or, you know, something happens and that sort of thing. And so you get an error. So if you're doing like 200 keywords, you probably won't see that many errors. If you're doing like 10,000 keywords, you're going to see more. I have 310,000 keywords. I'm going to see even more. This error count can get really high. It's fine. I don't care because it's working, right? I'm getting results. That's all that matters. So I just set this up and, you know, I'm going to let it run for till however long it completes while I sleep and everything else for 300,000 keywords. And on that note, it's important to note. Um, Storm Proxies recommends that the 80 thread package, if you're going to do more than two keywords at a time, 200 keywords at a time. So if you're just loading up a couple hundred keywords, get whatever package you want. If you're going to do 310,000 keywords, they recommend the 80 thread package. Um, they didn't really tell me why. That's just what they recommend. So, anyways, wrong one. So here we're scraping. All this is normal. It's humming along nicely. I'm just going to stop it because I don't actually need this scraped right now. So the next thing to note is. If you're going to do posting, use the three-minute proxies. Main gateway or for harvesting, three-minute proxies are for posting. Now, this is Storm Proxies. If you're using another private proxy or a back and act proxy provider, I don't know what their control panel is going to look like. I don't know what their options are going to be. Um, and I don't know what they're going to say as far as how to set it up, you know, and that sort of thing. So just reference whatever guide they give you for how to set this up. But with Storm Proxies, it's good to note these proxies are optimized for posting and these optimize proxies are for scraping. It's also important if they notice that you're scraping with these, they're going to ban your account because 
because of how these are set up, they do not want you to scrape Google with them. So obviously we don't care, that's fine. What you can do is you can run multiple instances of Scrapebox, unlimited actually, on your PC. I have a video on that, which I'll link to in the description but we can name them. So we're just going to go options and name them. And like I just put posting here, right? And I also named this one under options. Um, let's get out of this. I went to options and we named this one scraping, right? So it says it up here, scraping and posting, call it whatever you want. I put the three minute proxies in here, right? So you can see I've got two proxies, which is the main gateway and the three minute proxies. You start with 163. I just stuck them in here. And by keeping a separate instance of scrape box, I don't have to worry about changing them back and forth because if I put these in and do some posting and I want to do, do some scraping and I forget to change them, well, that's going to be a problem. So if you do two instances then and just name them, then all you have to really do is look at them and say, all right, posting, okay, I've got like 16 proxies because there's a bunch in here, right? And there's only like two for scraping. Then I just keep track of it and I, I make one shortcut on my desktop to launch scraping and one for launching posting. And I have them both running, you know, and that sort of thing. And it's easy to keep them separate. And by posting, I mean, if you're doing fast poster, like for instance, if you're using my service to do like auto approve links, that's posting. If you're doing contact forms right here, contact forms, that's posting, fast poster, manual poster is posting, trackbacks is posting, um, RSS, I would probably use the posting proxies, check links, you don't really need proxies. Um, and then browser-based ping mode, if you were going to do browser-based ping mode, I would use the, um, the main gateway proxies because you're trying to inflate uh, IP addresses, views, so you want as a big a proxy pool as possible from worldwide. Um, or you can do whatever, depending on what you're doing. Anyways, so that is how you can set up storm proxies and use storm proxies specifically. Uh, and that's what rotating, back connect, and reverse proxies are. They're just a big pool of proxies, which work really great. The one thing I should probably also say is that with 80 threads, uh, I think I said this maybe, um, you can use 20 for harvesting, remember 25%, but to let you use the other 60 for posting. So I can do poster and run that at 60. So I'm using my full 80 thread package at once, and that's fine. So you can run one instance posting and one instance scraping, so 20 scraping and 60 posting all at the same time, and that totals your 80 threads all at the same time. So that is how you can use those. And again, I'll put the uh, link it below for in the description I'll put the link for storm proxies and that is how you can use Scrapebox for reverse rotating and back connect proxies. Thanks for watching this Scrapebox video. For more Scrapebox videos click the subscribe button down below and then click the bell and then check out these other great Scrapebox videos.